At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish the way they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. And Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it if it bears fruit, good and well. But if not, you may cut it down. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior. Please join me in prayer. God, we hear your Lenten reminder to repent and to return, to repent of our separateness from you, to repent of the sins that keep us from your love and your mercy and your grace. Help us through the power of the Spirit to return to your love and to your grace. And in that love to go, to share your light and love with the world. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the vineyard owner said to the gardener, I've been looking for fruit for three years and I'm tired. I think this tree should be cut down. But the gardener pleaded on behalf of the tree and said, just give me one more year so that I can add manure, food, light, sun. And if it blooms, great. If it doesn't, we'll cut it down then. When I read this text, I always think of a story uh, in the mission development that I served outside of St. Louis. There was a young, name where, a young man, we're going to call him Bill, and Bill had every opportunity in life to succeed. He had the perfect school to go with, go to. He was really smart. He had very smart parents who succeeded a lot in their professions. He had everything going for him to just climb that ladder and soar. But one of his friends from one of the best schools in the best neighborhood offered him drugs at a party. Well, Bill kind of enjoyed the feeling he got when he participated in this activity. So within a couple months, Bill was stealing from his parents. They would go to sleep at night, and when they awoke in the morning, they found that something was missing, the cash that was in the drawer the favorite candlesticks from grandma, and the list went on and on. Well, they saw this as a cry for help from Bill, and so they put him in a rehab 
place, hoping that he could reclaim the future that they had planned for him. Well, he'd do really good for a couple of months, but then he turned back to his old habits. They kept putting him in rehab place after rehab place after rehab place. But finally, the mother said to the husband, we can't keep going this way. In essence, we've tried. It's time to cut this tree down. Well, Bob, the husband and father, was like the gardener pleading with his wife for at least one more chance for his son. They were at a stalemate of what they should do. The wife wanted to have nothing to do with her son. She felt that tough love might be the only thing that could help him recover. And Bob just wanted to keep loving him, his son, into wholeness and recovery. Well, the stalemate finally ended when one morning they awoke and there was another missing credit card. And Bob went into the garage to go to work and he noticed that every tool that he had so meticulously hung in his garage was gone. He presumed they were stolen and sold for money by his son, Bill. Well, they called the police and they filed charges of theft, of robbery against their son. Their son served a year in county jail, but the father, Bill, the heart of the gardener, kept visiting his son even though it was an hour trip each way. People from our mission church visited Bill, continuing to proclaim to him God's forgiveness, God's love, God's grace, that stuff that makes us bloom and grow. Well, the good news is that the fig tree did eventually bloom. He came out of jail. He was not allowed to return to his home, but his parents found him a halfway house that continued to help him recover and regain his wholeness so that he might achieve all that he could. Bill that fig tree heard the power of God's love to change his life. Bob, the father, and the people at the mission church were the proclaimers of that power, of God's love, of God's forgiveness, of God's grace. People offered Bill an opportunity to bear God's fruit. I wonder as we gather for worship today, what is preventing us from fully bearing God's fruit? What stands in our way from being all that God has created us to be? Do we hear the words of the vineyard owner and feel like these words are rather harsh? They're certainly the words of the world. If you don't produce, cut you out. There were people that told Bill and his wife to just, Bob and his wife to just let Bill die on the streets. If that's what he wanted to do with his life, just let him die. But fortunately, that wasn't the end of the message. Do we hear the words of destruction 
and think perhaps they don't apply to us, but rather apply to everyone else? That we are bearing fruit abundantly and we got it all figured out. Do we hear these words and wonder what is next? The good news, the gospel of today, is there is always one who pleads on our behalf with the vineyard owner. We have one who knows that we deserve to be cut down. We deserve to be thrown in the fire. But we have one that also knows the lawgiver demands obedience and will punish or reward us based on our actions. But thank God that we do not get what we deserve. Thank God that God continues to tell us over and over in the Bible, do not be afraid. The life giver's response to our disobedience is not punishment, but more love. Let me say that one more time. The life giver's response to our disobedience is not punishment, but instead love. Where do we find that kind of reaction in our world? God offers us love and grace, patience and steadfastness, and offers us what each of us need so that we might bear fruit the fruit of his love. Repentance allows God to continue to nurture and nourish us with what we need so that God might love us out of our sinful ways into a bountiful life of fruit bearing. I wanna close with a poem about manure written by a Methodist pastor Pastor Steve Holmes. What is repulsive to the nose may be sweet to the roots. What is a waste to the mind may be food for the soul. What is difficult and disruptive may harbor grace. The beloved to revive you will not uproot you, but will not leave your roots untouched. Let it alone. Let what is be what is and flourish with God's love. Amen.